Hello everyone, Matt here and welcome to Simply Strength. In today's video I'd like to talk about nightclubs, what they mean in a contemporary sense and why you should avoid them like the plague. I've decided to upload this video earlier in the week because to be honest I've had so much fun putting it together. So again, um, thank you to everybody who's subscribed to this channel. I'm having a lot of fun putting my thoughts out there, preparing videos and truly I want to go from, from strength to strength. So again, thank you. The topic today was inspired by videos from Sandman, Louis Marco and Aaron Clary on this issue and I've put the links below. So let's be clear about this. Nightclubs in the truest sense are cancerous, toxic and dystopian places that are kryptonite to human beings in general but especially to the modern man. They are dank, dingy, smelly cesspools of promiscuity and unrestrained arrogance designed to lure in blue pill men with promises of women, sex and endless fun into the early hours. Before my awakening to MGTOW, I would often go out with friends to such places, even as recently as my university studies in fact, at the beginning before I realised the illuminating truth. Several times earlier in my life I followed the same tragic, deluded modus operandi, and it goes something like this. I would head out a few days before to buy overpriced clothes, because one has to look good for Saturday night. I'd get all smartened up and clean-shaven, paying more attention to detail than if I were going for a job interview. Then I'd meet up with the guys and we'd go out for pre-drinks in a pub-type place, subsequently heading on to a nightclub or three. The first aspect that hits you is the price of entry. £10 for a lower-level place, but it can be shockingly expensive to get into places in big cities like Liverpool, Birmingham and London, for example, or obviously those places abroad, in Ibiza, for instance. Let's remember that these prices are just to walk through the door, no less. Moreover, you have the 6 foot 8 inch doormen, or bouncers, on the door checking you for knives and other stabbing implements. I don't like being treated like a criminal before the fact, especially when once you get into the club there's so much debauchery and scuzzbaggery going on in any case. Now you're inside the club, the first order of business is to get a drink. So, you head over to the bar and realise that there's a mass of people surrounding it. Three bar staff running around like headless chickens, unable to hear a word of what the customers are saying to them over the noise. You queue up with the others and maybe, just maybe, get served after about 25 minutes. The wallet takes a big hit, given that you'll pay upwards of £3.50 for a drink, be it an alcopop or a buttery pint of lager. They don't clean the pipes out so much at these places. I know people that have worked in breweries and seen the scale of this business, Alcopops are produced on a monumental scale, literally hundreds of thousands if not millions of 275 milliliter bottles produced per run. When you see the sheer scale of this, the price of manufacture is negligible almost, pence. And thus the markup in the club is insane. The guys at the top are making boatloads of cash at your and previously my expense. Now, at this point in my life, it didn't matter that I hated the music, the scene, and the other guys in the club for the most part. The only thing that mattered was the girls, and even though I probably wouldn't have had much in common with them, I knew the most attractive girls to me at the time resided in nightclubs. Again, this was before my decision to go my own way, about five years ago at the age of 21 or so. How then was I going to start talking to one of these girls, and was I ever successful in wooing one? Well... Prior to this point, I wouldn't even go up to a girl, let alone talk, but at this point in my life, I'd pluck up the courage to utter the simpy line, can I buy you a drink? I think all of you MGTOWs out there just collectively shook your heads. I mean, I may as well have just given them the money. On more than one occasion, I bought girls drinks and ended up with nothing at the end of the night. Indeed, nothing at the end of the night became a recurring and consistent theme throughout this period. All these drinks you'll be slamming down for want of nothing better to do, will cost a lot of money, but more urgently than that you'll start to need the toilet. Unfortunately, what constitutes a toilet in these places is insulting to almost any other lavatory in the land. Where else can you queue up, yes queue, to get to your urinal that's full of bottles and chewing gum, standing shoulder to shoulder in your own piss with drunken douchebags? Oh, and on the way out, a random guy stood there trying to sell you fragrance. What a life he has! I remember going up to one girl who was in her late teens, early twenties, I reckon. She was the archetype of my ideal woman with regards to appearance. She had long brown hair, pretty features, a great body, and was probably an 8.5 to 9 out of 10 by my reckoning. I went up to her and said my line, can I get you a drink? She replied with some degree of disdain, 
I've got a boyfriend, and her face was like thunder. I sauntered off unruffled, because looking back, I was already beginning to cultivate an attitude of indifference. For the rest of the night I noticed her, and not once did I see her with a boyfriend of any description. In fact, I saw her grinding up against a number of other guys. Firstly, this scuzzy, sketty behaviour set off alarm bells in my head. It helped me learn the reality of things, and I'm thankful for it. The purpose of nightclubs is not to get laid or find a girlfriend, not even remotely. Another time, close to the end of my affiliation with these places, I was out with some university classmates. We were in a basement club, and it was all smoky, and I was scouting for girls to go and talk to. There was a girl in red that was clearly the hottest in the club, maybe even the city, I don't know. Solid 9.5, and she knew it. She must have gone out a few times, because I could have sworn I'd seen her before. I tried it on without fear, and obviously got blown back, and she did this to about 15 guys or so. It wouldn't surprise me if she'd had a partner the whole time who didn't even go out with her. It was all ego-boosting just to confirm to herself how desirable she was, and this is common, I fear, in many women. Later, I saw a gap on the end of the bar and waited to get a drink. She sauntered over to me and squeezes between me and the next guy when clearly there wasn't room, thinking she should get in there priority purely by virtue of her looks. And obviously she did. This really annoyed me, but I couldn't really do anything. The place would have been full of white knights, not least the bouncers, but nevertheless it provided further impetus for me to abandon nightclubs for the rest of my life. In the marketing material for these clubs, for example the Facebook photos that go up the morning after, the majority of people in them are hot girls, with maybe the odd random dude trying to sneak in. It's weird because looking at them I'd be thinking, I don't remember her. If she was that hot I would have seen her surely. In fact, I don't remember there being this many hot girls in the club last night. It's purely an advertising gimmick to draw more guys in, that I can be certain. And other video creators, like the ones I mentioned at the start, have reflected on this in greater depth. The constant rejection sends a false message to you, that you are worthless as a man and have nothing to offer. After several instances of this, I realised one night a few years ago now, when I was out with two close friends visiting me at university, that I would never consciously go to a nightclub ever again. Both of my friends were getting it on with these two girls, that weren't particularly good looking, and they were part of a group of three. We were a group of three also, but sadly the last girl in their group was very unattractive and didn't want to engage in conversation. Now, I know that I'm not an ugly guy for sure, probably a seven. I train, lift, eat well, make an effort when I go out and take pride in myself. I'm not short of confidence. I used to be, but not anymore. I decided to make a journey onto the dance floor, never mind that I can't dance and I hate it. I'd had a fair bit to drink and didn't care. I tried dancing and talking to a few eights and nines, but they weren't interested in the slightest. And this built frustration, as Louis Marco was stressed. Enough frustration that for most of the rest of the evening I kept putting money into the punch bag machine and tried to beat the highest score, with encouragement from another drunken stranger next to me. My friends were like, where'd you go? And I simply said that this is the last time I spend any money on one of these places, let me tell you that. After leaving, usually you tend to finish the evening with a tray of mutated meat and grease. May or not spew it up into the toilet and go to sleep with the room spinning and your ears ringing, with a bonus of a sore throat. This is termed a good night. Then you wake up in the morning with a splitting headache, ears still ringing, sick to your stomach and with a considerably lighter wallet. If it's especially bad, then the following day is a write-off. You can't do anything for hours and feel like total garbage. Your productivity is through the floor. I now stick to live music shows more closely linked to my musical taste, but even then, they're once in a blue moon. And if I was going out for food or drink, which is a bit more common, I stick to good old-fashioned English pubs where we can engage in good conversation over fairly decent food. Also, one can't forget the very real risk of physical harm, even death, from approaching the wrong woman, the wrong drunken lunatic, the wrong bouncer and so on in nightclubs. Is it really worth losing your life over everything that I've just been speaking about? And I know it's rare, but it has happened. No, it's not worth it, not in the remotest sense. Seriously, I got sick of seeing these blue pill dudes swaggering around, thinking they're a gift to women clearly lacking in dress sense and effort, sniffing around the hottest women. 
They don't see that it's draining them, not empowering them. I just got fed up of seeing the hottest girls with douches, and for a short time, I doubted my own merits. Of course, I'm happy that I was a MGTOW by default, and I've linked to that original video. And for anybody who would say that I have no game, or have approach anxiety, or I need to learn pickup, why should I change who I am as a person and tailor myself to these girls that aren't even worthy of that kind of effort? More recently, my closest friends are planning a lad's holiday before we're 30, and I think I'm going to back my convictions and say to them straight up that I'm not going, because it will predominantly be nightclubs followed by misery the next day, perhaps even some sunburn the day after as well. I could go and betray myself, but the music is not my scene, and I don't fancy being surrounded by a bunch of brain-dead, wasted, post-adolescent sloths. I'd rather save the money for our next trip, Vietnam, travelling down the Mekong Delta. The world is such a huge and vibrant place with much to see and do. For example, wildlife, the great outdoors, experience days, etc, etc. To finish off, let's express this purely in terms of resources, shall we? For example, say you go out every Saturday night for a year, 52 nights, and you stay out on average from 10pm to 4am, 6 hours for the night, and I know that this is very conservative, and let's say you spend £80. Over the year that's 312 hours and £4,160. Just think of what you could accomplish with that time and especially money. You could pay to do a master's degree. Invest it in the stock market, pay for a high quality holiday, take yourself on experience days, do personal development courses, learn a language, buy hundreds of brand new books, build a home gym with a barbell and plates, and much more I think you'll agree. Bringing the topic back to girls and sex, the money could be used to pay for a high class escort, cutting out the middleman and getting what you wanted in the first place. So, to sum up, avoid nightclubs everyone. They are cancerous, destructive, frustrating, alienating and counterproductive to personal development. As always, I welcome critique and would encourage you to digest my arguments and come to your own conclusions on this topic and others that I have spoken about. I'd love to hear your comments, thoughts and perspective down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you found this video useful and would like to help me continue to make the best videos possible, please check out my Patreon page. Thank you and take care.